So, um, I wasn't even thinking of recording today, because it's not my date to record, but man proposes, God disposes. So, uh, this past weekend, on Friday, um, I went to see the movie Joker, the Joker with um, my date, and um, my husband, and I liked it. <laughs> I think the movie to me is not just... Oh, my then. I think it's a movie that um, critiques the human experience. You would love the movie if you would just think of it like trying to get into the underpinnings of the man who we know as Joker, because his story has never really been told in in the public eye to the public eye, and I think it's only been told four times. And once was like maybe many years ago, and then we've had we've seen glimpses of his story, but never like who was Alfred Fleck, you know. And um, you probably leave the cinema feeling very awkward and just like, what the heck did I watch? But not in a when you watch like Predator vs. Alien, which was a horrible movie for me, still scars me to date. But I get it. You know, I appreciated it for what it was. Um, and as someone who looks into individual determinants of health and social determinants of health, I mean, textbook character of just everything that could go wrong. Um, first, absent father in the home. You know, he didn't ha- he didn't have a dad growing up that he even knew about. Um, his mom had a mental health issue, which was not properly treated or even addressed. And, you know, that carried on and being in an unstable environment where she had, um, living boyfriends who, so you looked at, you know, AC's adverse childhood experiences and sexual harassment, sexual molestation, physical abuse, sexual abuse, childhood, you know, sexual abuse and all that. I mean, this guy was just, uh, if anything, if he had grown up to be well-adjusted, that would have been a miracle. And I think for me, the movie is like a mirror on how, as a society, we need to do better in catching these issues and, and just not letting them, how do I put it, not, sh- not like shoving them under the carpet, because... Kids from those kind of backgrounds, we are all responsible for it. And that's, they're going to affect us one way or the other. We might end up marrying them or um, being friends with them. Or just being in business with them or just knowing people like that. And so for me, it was like a mirror to basically look deep into my heart and see how I could be a better person. Um, and do my best in just helping those around me. I think that was the movie. And Joaquin Phoenix, oh my gosh. Just give the guy an Oscar, an Oscar already. Just throw it at him. Like, just fling it at him. I mean, that was, his performance was just thrilling. So the last joker that really hit home for me was, um, his ledger. And, oh my gosh. He was good. But I think Joaquin, like, you can't even compare that performances. It's like comparing, you know, kimchi and bulgogi. Like, they're, they're both great, you know. And then having them together is like, perfect. And from what I heard about um, his role for this movie, he didn't even, he didn't watch um, any of the, like, he didn't model. Rather than just look at, you know, other Joker performances to model his role, he just watched videos of people with pseudo boba effect. That's PBA. And that's a condition that's characterized by episodes of sudden, uncontrollable, uncontrollable and inappropriate laughter. It's a rare disease. And that's what he did. And the rest, he just, you know, even his suit, like, you know, he didn't have the, he didn't have the purple suit. He did a different color, but the hair was still green. <sighs> just a roll. Like, I'm a history buff and I won't even, that's it. I don't even consider myself like, the go-to person for like you know 70s culture and pop 
but there's so many um homage and um what you call easter eggs in the movie all throughout that uh, points to like you know um the gets um new york um massacre like there's this guy in new york 1984 new york subway shooting his name was um well his name is bernard glad i don't know saying his name very well he basically shot you know four people they were black and that kind of sparked and that was a time when crime was high in new york and um, it was just like a racially test time where blacks thought you know whites thought blacks were like the perpetrators and villains and you know that kind of sentiment which you still have you know happening today and he was dubbed the subway vigilante and um i think something he said something like my only regret was i didn't have enough bullets in my gun or something like that but yeah there's a scene like that in the movie where you know to think about the making of a joke i'm not gonna spoil it so um that was that was this weekend um i think it's it's not like an action-packed movie like you know, when you think of Batman versus the Joker, you know, CGI effect, the good guy wins, the bad guy goes up. No. It's disturbingly good. It's it's just it's disturbingly good. And I had shared this with my my friend because I posted on my Facebook that I've gone to see it. And then my my uh, my friend had asked me, How was it? I was like, Well, um, I think you might enjoy it. The storytelling was really done well. If you're to only focus on the angle that we're being given a glimpse into the origins of the Joker's self-destructive path. The movie is heavier and darker than the other Joker's movies, which I talked about. And for me, it filled a lot of loose portions. So yeah, I think another reminder is just to be kind to people. Like, you never know what kind of experiences people are living through. Maybe they have an abusive mother at home or an abusing, abusive dad at home. And you can just be that smile that brightens up the day. Not as if to say you can you can actually be that person. And you can even be that person that saves them from, you know, um a path of to, to save them from the ledge, preferably or just in you know, an actual sense of it. So in your little ways, be kind to people. You see people smile, try to pay them a compliment, you know, genuinely. And so that's what the movie really taught me. And the many missed opportunities for someone to have intervened um, with more stability and just helping him just... Not that I think everything that was done in the movie was because of other people. I mean, people have gone through worse than that and it didn't turn out to be that way. But, um, I mean, if that had happened, we'd probably be having the movie Joker. I was just trying to say... People have different ways of dealing with stuff, and you never know those who can fare, but who are gonna um, end up faring better versus those that are um, gonna take a turn for the worse. So the key thing here is just to be mindful and be kind to people. And um, yeah, so here's a reminder from me: be kind, smile, and 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 treat each other gently, play nicey nice. And uh, true confession. I did not go see this movie when it just premiered. I decided to wait, like, I think a whole week or so. So, you know, think about what happened in that movie theater in Aurora in 2012. I didn't want to be a victim of mass shooting. I live in Oklahoma, the gun, one of the gun capitals of the U.S. So, that's that. I, I wouldn't lie. That thought crossed my mind. Like, sit your butt at home and wait until a week when the buzz around the movie is tight down. And uh theater wasn't that packed. It was a Friday night. I wanna say it was just a little bit um halfway full. So um that's that. Like I said, um I think the the clarity for me that this movie provided a path to understand the mind of the Joker. Not necessarily um accept or condone that kind of behavior or even like empathize but it's just like to understand to understand how people like that get to that and i think that that narrative sometimes is missing in in actual cases like this like why do people do bad things or what are the things that broke down for you to get there you know and as scientists we we do look at um, models from conception to birth and also, we've done 
longitudinal studies to look at the trajectory of um, a child born into a certain um, environment and how they grow up and um, they turn out for the worst. That, that models that can really predict um, how someone can turn out and based on, you know, those kind of on, on health outcomes. So um, with the ACE study with that, I talked about the adverse childhood event. So if you were sexually abused, they have like, you know, they have like 10 questions there, but don't quote me on that. And if you score highly on maybe like 5 out of 10 or 6 out of 10, they can, I mean, within some errors of approximation, it can predict just your health status in the future, like whether you're prone to certain kinds of cancers or dementia or um, hypertension. So if you've been sexually abused, if you have like um, housing issues, if you didn't complete college and things like that. And if you did that for health outcomes, how about it will like impact on societal burden, you know, um, and trying to, in a way, not profile, but identifying those gaps and stepping in. And I don't know how that's going to be done. Theoretically, there'll be like um, safeguards, there'll be um, community liaisons like step in and help out. And in the advent of a, pe- a child not even having like a uh, wholesome environment or even like a next um, family, next of kin to like, you know, live with. Maybe churches or religious organizations can step in and help. Like what you currently have through the foster system, which might not even be a good model if I talked about it now. But I mean, I think that's what the movie did for me. It, it provided um, a glimpse into the human mind. And as someone that is very interested in, you know, human behavior and, um, and the psychology, psyche of people, um, t- that was just brilliant for me. And I talked about this, I think, some while ago. I love watching um, criminal shows like Forensic TV, um, Mind Hunters, and things like that. And, and I think if, you, if you're if one of the consumers of this kind of product, um, this movie, The Joker, would, would, you know, really satisfy you on those ends. All right. That was my movie review for The Joker. I really liked it. Very contemplative. So yeah, has anyone else seen it? Let me know what you thought about it.